I, th I think it's a pretty well-rounded lineup. They've got nice building push, decent. Uh, they're, they're lacking a little bit in catch, um, but lots of team fight. Ochre together with Brewmaster, where they would alacrity the Earth Brew. Uh, that that uh, Brewlink does a lot of damage to buildings, and then when you give it that attack speed and damage, it's actually pretty crazy. All right, let's look at a oh. fight here. Yeah, Looks like something's going to go down. Smoke Jirax, here comes your shard down forward. As Matthew trapped in at the moment, he wants to break free, but there's nothing he can do. He can turn for a void. The fidget stun! Is there enough space? Even with the fairy fire, it won't be enough. That one second Chaos Bolt stun provide the extra damage needed to kill off the Night Stalker. Tomato is going to have to rotate himself over. They go for another Shaz. Now it's King Tekka trapped in the Shadow Wave with three heroes. Another Fissure to create space, but a second time! The stun will connect, giving no tell. Not only a double kill, it'll be a double rune. So getting him off to a good start and getting him comfortable is surely going to help. I, I kind of like Troll in this game. I think it's pretty good. There's a little bit of a problem until... Oh, actually, there is on top lane. King Tekka, the Fissure catching two. Matthew's there, the Sunstrike is going to connect. But the damage is split between Matthew and King Tekka, so Fly will fall. And a much-needed rotation from Infamous arrives on the north. No town trying to get on the other side. Reality Rift helps him out with that. Support is nearby in the form of Fly. I like this one, no tail phone bottle. I think it's good on uh, safe lane Chaos Knight. You have very easy oh, access King to the Oh, yeah. He's he stuck around. He tried to damage Fly. That wasn't going to work. The Fidget gets thrown out, but Fly already finds that kill. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Jirax is the other casualty of war. Anna under his tower, trying to invoke up the cold wall. Maybe that is enough to keep him away. The damage, there isn't a tick for him. So Anna will survive, will burn the salve. The Earthshaker has got nothing out of this top lane. Like King Taka, he's died two times. He's really struggled to find any space to find. This is a great rotation from OG. They have the oh. heal bomb. Nice. Shards forward. Snowball catching two. Combining with the climb of the Brewmaster split. Comes down for the first time. Troll Warlord. The Sun Strike would have killed him if Fly's heal bomb didn't do it. As Lich spin him round and drop him down. A cell will die. And OG can turn this momentum with the first Phantasm use of No Tell into the death of the tier 1 tower on bottom lane. The problem is it's daytime and they don't have the best pushers themselves either, so they're actually not really gaining too much out of these cooldowns from OG. Instead, they're just going to get some farm. This is extremely is... optimistic from Ben Jazz. Yeah, he didn't run down and was right to do so. I think he scouted out the fact that the CK was there, but the Sun Strike from Anna will hit the money. Hilariously uh... enough, Acel started his own TP and left the Troll Warlord alone on the top. He went all the way back to the fountain and just abandoned his teammate. It's a big rotation, but it's still worth it for OG to get a core kill. If that was a support that they TP two or three heroes in to kill there, I think that would have been worth it for the Infamous side. But Smoke up. Troll is big on mid lane. Tomato. Mid. No tell sets up. The one second stun might be enough as well. Tomato starts his TP out. Canceled very, very quickly. Destroyed by Anna Sunstrike, and they're wanting more. Oh. Crit! Destroys the Lich. Finally, Nice Talker will hit the ground. Stunned up by the Earth. Brueling. Have they got a little bit more? No tell. Reality Rift. Give the negative bomb. And the stun is there. Night Stalker will fall. He cannot reach the safety of the high ground. And once more, OG take a fight and push it to the town. I'm fairly certain Fly is already up. Between the top tier 2 and the mid tier 2, you would smoke in that, that area and start moving out. So OG, with this aggressive warding, they have a pretty good read on when multiple heroes are missing, and then they can counterplay pretty easily. Nice um, Matthew found is in one. a really awkward spot. He took, he took to Fly, able to see Fly. Tomato's gonna come over. S4 might do enough. Dazzle, Shallow Grave at the very end, and then throws down the weave. The Sun Strike right on the money. Tomato takes so much damage, and Fly, he will still go down to the Viper Corrosive skin, but Matthew you trapped in the trees. You did all of that to kill off a support dazzle and nice, nice, nice. First, like you said, the Troll Warlord is finding a lot of farm and we'll be reaching a point that it gets very interesting. The, the question is, can Infamous actually hold heroes in place to deal damage and can he survive? Ball forward, OG can hold him in position. Flip him like an omelette and the Echo Slam! King Tekka arrives! Tusker won't go down! Now the Lich only bounces forward, killing off Jirax. It's trapped between Fly and Anna. Some decent damage and it's forced him away from the Brewmaster. Reveal now, the Shallow Grave's still there. Starts the TP, where's the stun? Where's the control? Where's the damage? Where's the kill? Oh, he bought a Fairy Fire. <laughs> He bought and used the fair fire. I actually don't think he needed it, but that was such a such a good play under pressure there by S4. It's like borderline disgusting, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. I'm not sure if they have to stay in Toby. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know they did. Bring the attention of all four heroes to you, and then just dis disappear. I really like this play in general. Um, oh, Jirax. Okay, is, hang he's on. He's snowballing a creep. Is he? 
Yo. Is he actually? Wait, what? He's going after the Viper. Doesn't have the range for it. And Viper going to four star four. Jirax has no safe here. Shards himself on the hill. They don't see him, but the fissure from King Tekka. All right, he's just batshit crazy, man. What was that? <laughs> What was that snow? He, he wouldn't have even survived the TP home. <laughs> like, even if the fissure didn't connect. And it was like, okay, you just came to kill an ogre. And I killed four creep waves. And I don't really care. You know, I'm going to respawn my team's farming. Great. Space is being created. Right that now, some strike. Great. Nice stalker. That was confidence. TPing on top of the tier two tower. Loses his life instantly. Chaos Knight's at least a little bit trapped, but it's Armlet and Aegis. Four time major winners and OG. Their Achilles heel is the big one. It's still TI. They need a good performance. And this confidence is going to help them. And especially this kill is going to help them on their way. Only one second sub, but no tell. Oh, nice. nice. Four star oh. over the hill. But the shots, it doesn't hold him. But the snowball will stop him for a moment. Walrus punch up. And they pull Tomato up. Matthew wants to help out. Two seconds on over on the Viper. He's just spending his money knowing this Brewmaster ult. He is down. There's way too much control for him to survive. No tell will be lucky. Fly has to self grave to stay alive in a cell, trapped in by the shards. Jirax and S4 teaming up perfectly. Lich just wants to get the high ground into safety, but the shards just last for way too bloody long. Can't reach the tier three tower. And no G will achieve that for him, taking the tier two and pushing with this fresh phantasm of no tell. They're gonna fight. It's pretty extreme. They point. have to fight. The BKB's on the troll. Lich is back to the world of the living. Viper can TP herself to the front line. Jirax, Anna starting their TP out. The Fissure canceling the one on the task guard. No tell turns around. So does Anna. All right, if you want to fight, they will happily to oblige. The EMP burn is perfect for the BKB. Out from Benjaz. No tell likely to lose his life, or at least just the Aegis trapped inside the base. And OG, they are not coming to help him. They're standing their ground up on the high ground, well away from No tell. They'll let him die. Took a decent amount to get it. Infamous, of course, they want more. TPing forward towards the shrine. They've already managed to catch up a fly. Jirax as well, trapped inside the camp. The fissure will connect. Someone needs to reach him. Tomato navigating. Jirax couldn't push himself uphill this time. OG lose four heroes. They do take the tier three tower, but look at that line from Infamous. Mid, 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 push. At the end of the day, they like try to half and half, and they got nothing. They got the, I mean, they got the tower, but they play, paid four heroes for it. That was... Defense is coming to mid. Very no tells doing the old wraparound. Comes in. Reality ripped to start with. Chaos Bolt. Only two seconds on over on the Viper. The Echo Slam from King Tekka. Trying to create space. Unstrike making it difficult for Benjaz. But he's just beating into no tell. The shallow grave is too much. And Benjaz trapped in an icy grave. Chaos Knight will survive. The heel kicks through. A cell will fall down. Infamous thought they had a little bit of momentum. But OG, it was crocodile tears. You thought they were bleeding from the eyes, but... OG, and now much oh, they're gonna make the infamous racks bleed. Now they, they committed so much, now they have nothing. It looked like a good echo slime, you know, you're tempted to go in for that echo. There's three, there's uh, Chaos Knight using Phantasm. They didn't have the combo, else we would be using it for this Roche. So we're gonna see a mid push probably coming in next. Tomato. Up. Infamous are looking for this opportunity, it's gone. Chirax again was just muscling the mid lane down. But you know the Roshan's done. OG are coming. Now the good chance locking in Tomato. He knows he has to try and get out there and fight, but any chip damage into Nortel can just be repaired by that heart of his. So Anna stands his ground, killing off the melee racks. Two more hits, one more. There she goes. The melee racks is down, but King Tekka on the back lines. He's found the Echo Slam. They've killed off the Saving Grace. They've killed off the Dazzle. The question is, how much more can they get? Matthew's here. Nortel wants him. A three second stun. The shards are nice, but then again, no. It keeps Anna out of the Fine, they have to turn back over to King Tekka. Jirax able to do that with his blink dagger. The Benjaz now to the front lines too. They find another. The silence onto Anna. OG, why are these pushes so costly? Once again, they have claimed a mid racks, but how many heroes do you have to lose for it? Nortel back into the fight, still has cheese. Anna up and towards the air. He doesn't have that extra life. Tomato can finally bring him down. He'll get money, but the question is can he live? Without your life, money's not worth a hell of a lot. Nortel wants to fight harder. He may have to burn the cheese if he wants to have his stun as well as disable. But the TP out is perfect. All the way home to tell his kids of the tale. He's going to push him with Alacrity and DD. They only have one more lane of ranks, Toji, before they force the Megas. But the better thing is Benjaz caught out. S4 is here. So is the Tuscar Snowball. They punch him. They flip him. 17 HP. Someone finished the job. will be Anna with the last attack as he juggles the balls in victory. He has buyback on the troll, which will most definitely be forced here. No Tails just patiently waiting here for the wave to reach. 
They want to get some vision in the Radiant base so that they can jump with their Brewmaster. Doesn't seem like they have a ward available. They're Actually, coming out. does have a ward. Are they, are they really going to try and come? Defensive Observer Ward. There's a nice aggressive one from Infamous. No tell. The Creep Wave's coming in. There should be some good damage if you want to Echo Slam it, but they fish you for now. Tornado trying to create space from Anna, and it did exactly that job. No tell. Reality. Oh, just losing the range on Viper. He's trying to bait the BKB from Tomato. That's what he wants. This 10 second BKB. Oh, there's Reality Rift. They go on Benjaz. They get the BKB out of him. And now the initiation has to happen. The Echo Slam on the back lines. Fly will die again. King Tekka hits the right and the money. They can they get both supports. Tomato's doing the work against Anna. Yule Scepter protected for the moment. Up and towards the end. The Lich only hasn't done enough work as King Tekka and Matthew. They're still just trying to chase the support kill. They're going to find Tusker in the tree. Matthew will bring him down, but it took so damn long. The no tug Get back in and kill off the Earthshaker, leaving Tomato stranded. Hurricane Pike trying to create space, but the real CK is on the money. One minute without both the Troll and the Viper. S4 looking to actually make that even better. Trying to kill off this Night Stalker. Anna joining the fight. The Shrine will give Matthew a little bit more life. Cole Snap making it difficult to run away. He's underneath the Tier 4 tower. Reality Rift, no tail, kills him under that Tier 4 tower. A cell, the sole survivor. Good luck, Lich. This guy needs to be six slotted to defend this, I think. Are you talking to Lich? Yeah. <laughs> yep, maybe. Need some very specific items. I'm not sure they exist. Vale and Dagon level five, so at least he can nuke somebody. Side to keep everyone else away in an Aghanim Scepter. <laughs> that, that may be enough. You know. But yeah, it's way too much to repel. OG, very convincing. And again, methodical killing of the team that placed bottom in both of the groups. OG looked pretty good in this. I think there were a couple of times they overstepped their boundaries a bit that they need to be careful with against the better teams, but that was, uh, that was very convincing. I like their strategy, I like the way they put their lanes, I like the way they combined their spells and look for the right moments. It's Something you can really tell in some of OG's games is that they have this very good uh, foresight. And something S4 especially is extremely good at is warning his team of what he wants to happen in 30 seconds. So it's like, I'm about to be six, rotate bottom of the smoke, we make this play, they're going to do this, we do that.